quarter of adults in Britain are so obsessed with cleaning and tidying that they spend over four years of their waking lives on household chores, with many feeling compelled to abide by strict regimes and rituals. My favourite cleaning task is my downstairs toilet. I lock the door after I've cleaned it. I don't like people using it. <laughs> are we going to put your boots on? It stops the germs and the dirt coming into the house. Nice clean feet now, haven't you? As a scientist, I like to make my own cleaning products. Mm. But for most of us, keeping our homes clean and tidy is not a priority. Mm. Cleaning can be therapeutic, yet 70% of Brits are unable to find the time to clean their homes. This used to be a beautiful dining room, but it's now the bird room. Hello! And more than half of us will argue with our partners over the mess. The oven only gets cleaned once a month. I'm not even that. You don't, you never notice if I've cleaned something anyway. Can a group of obsessive cleaners transform the habits of a nation? Please, gets rid of the smell. And well, we'll get rid of that. There's no need for that. <gasps> Gross! It stinks of cat wee in your house. All right, OK then. Or will this prove too much? Oh my God. <coughs> Oh, God, I got a gag. <coughs> for the people whose need for perfection... That's weird. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's like a health hazard, that. Yeah. ...has become an obsession. I need to go and decontaminate myself. How the hell do you live like this? You Can you move, move, please? He's getting annoyed. <laughs> Look at that. ka -ching! In Great Yarmouth, 53-year-old plumber Julie dedicates over two hours each evening after work, keeping her three-bedroom bungalow immaculate. The first impression of when people come in the front door is, what ward am I on? And even my partner's children call me the cleaner. Where's the cleaner, Dad? Although not OCD diagnosed, she will steam clean her kitchen floor up to three times a day. The kitchen floor is my pride and joy. If I'd just steamed my floor and somebody came in um, and walked o o over it, it would be, stop! Look, you can see I cleaned the floor, so what makes you want to walk on it? Despite being an obsessive cleaner, Julie won't use chemical-based products. I don't like lime scale around my taps. I use a natural product, vinegar, so by the time I get up in the morning, that'll be absolutely clean. And her love of using natural products isn't limited to the kitchen. I like to use a lemon to clean my toilet. This is a much more effective than bleach. My toilet is so clean, I could actually drink from it. Could actually add a slice of lemon to that. Cha-ching. Julie believes her cleaning fixation has been passed down from her Romany gypsy ancestors. My cleaning obsession comes from my great-grandmother, I clean like a Romany, but I think I've taken it to the extreme. Julie is packing up her natural products and preparing to go and help someone who has a very different attitude towards dirt and germs. Dirty and cluttered houses can make me feel a bit agitated. I think I could help somebody with using my techniques. Maybe they could change their ways and feel more positive about themselves. I could learn Maybe I don't need to keep cleaning so much. Maybe that's not important in my life. Prizing herself away from her clinically clean home, she's travelled over 30 miles to the village of Coltishall in Norfolk. The garden's a bit overgrown. There's quite a bit of uh, debris inside the garden. At the minute, my mind is racing because I'm not quite sure what I'm actually up against. When I come home after being out, I open the door and I look around and think, oh, my God. 52-year-old environmentalist Ken lives in his three-bedroom house with his two dogs, Chattanooga and Millie. Good girl. But his love of reusing discarded items means the house has become a dumping ground for recycling projects. I've got a lot of clutter, bits and pieces, unfinished projects. I've got various collections as well. All of this is recycled, reclaimed from skips. I guess I was 
deeply affected by the Wombles as a child. With so much clutter clogging up his home, Ken hasn't been able to clean properly for over five years. I cleaned in here, obviously, far too long ago. Out you get. And much of the grime has been left untouched due to Ken's phobia of vacuum cleaners. I don't vacuum. For various personal reasons, I find it very, very stressful to use it. I've let my house get in an appalling state. I can't live like this. It's filthy. With a house in such a state, Ken's son Richard rarely Ooh. visits. He collects things from skips and charity shops and all over the place and squirrels everything everywhere. Having some level of organisation in that place even would just help him that little bit. Yeah, I guess this is my worst offence at abandoned projects. It's been sitting on my shelf how long now? God knows, about ten years. I want to be able to use this house to be a comfortable place for my friends to come and visit. I'd really like to be able to invite my son over what I really want to take away from this is that new start. Shush! Enough! Hello? Hello! Oh, yeah? My name's Julie. I'm Ken. Back, back, beast. Back. Oh. Come in. This is my study. OK. <gasps> Ew! What's that? Uh, I think that's exactly what that looks like. I think Millie's been in here. I'm coming over this way. Absolutely. Mind your footing. You can't really do anything in this room, can you, Ken? It's a mm. useless waste of space. I can't come in here and play my guitars. It's appalling. It really is. You're right. And you I... hit the nail on the yeah. head. That's appalling. Ooh. How the hell do you live like this? It's difficult. What room is this, actually? Um, this is supposed to be my dining room. It's quite um, cluttered. There's no floor space. Well, windows, that... yeah. Can you see out of them? These ones are covered in dog slime because okay. they will lick the windows when people come round. This is my bedroom. This is the repository of my deepest sins. Ken, is that your bed? There are three dog beds in this house. Is I that get... the dog bed? I get to share one of them. <laughs> Ken, there's a fag in the bed. You? How did that there's get There's a them? fag in the bed. Ken, that's not happening. Uh, How did you go to the toilet? <laughs> did you sit on that? Um, with great reluctance. With all the flies around you? Well, live and let live, you know. My toilet is that clean, I can actually put a glass in it and drink water from it. Not good. I need the toilet now. What do I do? Where do I go? I can't go in there, can I? Ah! <laughs> With a four-day clean ahead of her, Julie is going to give Ken a taste of the standards she will be enforcing. That's a picture of my kitchen. That's beautiful, but I'd be afraid of my cooking turning out tasting of bleach. That's my hallway. My God, it looks like something out of a hospital. For it to be surgically clean is unnecessary. Well, my kitchen floor, I'll clean up to three times a day. And, really? uh, and steam it. It really is obsessive. Honestly, if you really can't leave your house because there is a teacup sitting on the draining board that hasn't been washed up, that's a problem. I think Julie's just a little bit neurotic about this cleaning business. There's far too much clutter in there. It's dangerous, um, so a lot of it's got to go. And hopefully he'll agree with what I say. If she thinks she's coming in here and she's going to throw everything out and give me the minimalist lifestyle that she obviously has. She's got another thing coming. Even though most people's toilets are a stone's throw away from their showers, 42% of people admit to urinating while standing under one. But for 30-year-old Crystal, nothing makes it down the plug hole. Although she hoovers and polishes it every day, her shower is for exhibition only. This shower, we don't use it. It's for display purposes. Crystal spends five hours a day keeping her two-bedroom London apartment spotless. When I'm cleaning, I have to time the cleans. It's like a military operation. I need to get it done. And nothing's clean unless it smells good enough to eat. Smell is very important. It's, it's 
the most important thing. The smell of apple is delicious. I just love it. Although she's not OCD diagnosed, Crystal starts her daily cleaning routine at 5 a.m. There's always something to do. We've got mirror splash racks. I'm polishing that, I'd say, in the 50s, 50 times a day. And top of her cleaning list are her bed sheets, which are washed and ironed every day. Once it comes out of the dryer, it's still a little bit crinkly. I think everyone should iron their sheets. So pay, pay attention. Ozzy Crystal has an eight-month-old son with her partner of two years. Ooh, messy boy. But worries that her obsessive cleaning will ruin her plans for a big wedding. <laughs> I feel like if anyone is neglected, it may be my partner. I'd like to get married, but if I'm constantly choosing cleaning over spending time with somebody, why would they want to marry me? Crystal will be heading north to meet someone with very different priorities when it comes to cleanliness. I'm pretty direct. I will speak my mind. If I feel like something is not right, then I'll just let them know. Leaving her crystal clean apartment, she's travelled 140 miles to Birmingham. Wow, <laughs> lots of overgrown grass. Please go around to the back door as Bell not working. Oh, scary. It's nigh on impossible to navigate around this place without tripping or slipping. Tripped over down here and went face planted myself into the carpet. <laughs> it was quite good. 52-year-old <laughs> former nurse April lives with her husband and son in their three-bedroom house on the outskirts of Birmingham. The home has not been deep cleaned in seven years. I don't spend a lot of time in this house. There's too much stuff in it. It's too close. It becomes like a prison. I'm stuck. My husband moved into my house five years ago and bought his house down here. Then he moved out, didn't take anything with him, furnished a flat, moved back in again. It just accumulates stuff, just accumulates. I don't know, it's like it appears out of thin air. OK. With the clutter piling up, April still won't allow her husband, Paul, to lift a finger. April thinks that because I've been to work all day, that I shouldn't have to come home and clean. But since April had a hip operation three years ago, she's found it difficult to keep on top of the housework. Even though I know I'm physically not able to do it, I still think it should be my job to do it because I'm not working, so I feel it should be me that's doing it. April cares for and relies on her 23-year-old son, Alan. He has learning difficulties and is an avid collector of Lego and games. Al! Yeah? Come on. Uh, I'll move it in a bit. <laughs> Whatever. Alan doesn't particularly like cleaning because it's time that he feels he's wasted when he could be playing his games. True? False? That is correct. With a house to run and a son to look out for, music lover April struggles to find time for herself. I would just love this room to be somewhere where I could just come and chill and play my organ, play the clarinet, which I, I haven't done for years. With no room to move, April realises she needs help. The house now is out of control. I need help, I know I need help, and it's got to the stage where I don't know where to start. Hello. Hi there. Hi. I'm April. Hi, I'm Crystal. Hi there. Do you want to come in? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I'm speechless. Is your kitchen not like this? No, it's not. It's, de <laughs> it's definitely not like this. You used the cooker. Mm -hmm. When was this last cleaned? A while ago? Or? I think my husband probably last cleaned that, probably about three years ago. <laughs> this is the next one. OK. Well, how do you eat? In another room. Oh, so TV dinner. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> This is a lovely table to sit on. But no, it's for, for eating on, not for, mm. I don't know. Going into, the f into, into that room ahead of you. 
I don't know if I can. You can get further in because I've been right up there if you want to go in. Yeah, no, it's just too, it just feels too claustrophobic for me. <laughs> OK. Too much stuff for me. But I would love this to be cleaned out and this is where I'd like my instruments. Hi, Alan. Hi. This is Crystal. Al uh, no. Crystal, this is Alan, my son. Nice to meet you. The same. You've got a lot of stuff in here, Alan. Mm. Alan in his floor robe. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I think he's got a bit out of hand, to be honest. Do you think? Yeah. I feel uncomfortable. It's claustrophobic and there's too much stuff around. It's like the polar opposites to my, to my house. Mine's quite stark and hers is maybe overbearing. Before coming back to start the four-day clean in the morning, Crystal wants to give April a taste of the high standard she commands at home. Um, so this is my my kitchen and living room and yeah. dining. How often do you clean this place? It's a few times a day. I wake up about yeah. five o'clock to do to five start. Okay. <laughs> to right. start this next room. Okay. This is actually the shower never gets used. It's um, what I would say a display shower. I just polish it. I actually hoover it. Um, but Why yeah. do you polish something that you never ever use? It collects dust. She must have a bank account just for just for cleaning projects. Bye. Uh, bye. Look after. There's definitely more to life than just cleaning. Do you have time for friends? Do you have time for social life? I think it's going to be a huge challenge because um, there's just quite a lot to get done. I just want them to have each a space to relax in and to, to do something that they like. In Norfolk, obsessive cleaner Julie has agreed to help environmentalist Ken throw out the mountains of clutter he's built up over the years. It's going to be full on. I'm all ready to go. I'm kitted up. I'm going to go in for action. Hello. Come yes, on I through. am. Yes. In four days, she's hoping to clear and clean the bedroom, the study, the dining room and Ken's toilet. I see you're all ready for it, but... Don't you think that's a little overkill? After all, it's not a nuclear waste site. <laughs> that's your opinion. Ah. Here we go. Oh. They start with Ken's study, which is overflowing with materials for his numerous unfinished projects. That picture frame I have in mind for something. Uh, that is intended to be more display cabinet for my miniatures. What about this? Now that as a turntable. Do you think that this project is going to happen? Yes. And that project? Yes. And that project? Yes. Ken is just holding on to everything. Now you've got loads and loads of mirrors. Do you need another one? Yes. Ken, do you use that? Yes. You do? Are you going to use this computer? Yes. I recycle, but you know, how much stuff do you need in there? Not rubbish. Okay, and what are you going to do with them? These, I will be making bone handles for these. Will be? Outdoor. I will be. Ken, why in the 21st century do you want to make bone tools? A uh, lot of the stuff in there is, to me, valuable. You don't need it, Ken. We haven't come to fisticuffs yet. There's been disagreements, but there's not been outright warfare yet. I think maybe I'm going to have to be a little bit more harsher with him. Ken, we need to crack on! What are you throwing away now? I'm not! Need to get that fixed. Are you ever going to get it fixed? Yes. No. Ken, look. Go on, you can do it! Oh, yeah, Yay! OK! OK! Well done, Ken. Right. I'll regret this forever. No, you you regret I will regret this Quick, forever. get out the door! It seemed a little bit slow to start with, but now it's, uh, it's speeded up now, and hopefully the next room will be even quicker. One in 50 people in Britain is diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. For some, this can manifest itself as a fear of germs and a compulsion to clean. I feel like now I've steamed it, any germs that were left over are now burning in hell. Mum of three, Hayley, who was diagnosed with OCD in 2007, can spend nine hours a day in the battle against bacteria. If I wasn't able to clean, I do get very anxious and it makes me feel really uncomfortable. 
facing my fears is really important because I think it reiterates the fact that the OCD is just a fault and nothing bad is going to happen if I come into contact with things that are dirty. Hayley is determined to challenge her OCD. <coughs> Each week, she will invite two equally obsessive cleaners to showcase their extreme cleaning rituals and join her in tackling some of Britain's dirtiest places. That is just nasty. <laughs> Together, they will face their fear of germs head on. Oh, someone's mouth's been round that. This week, they will be taking on kitchen surfaces. After demonstrating how they clean their own, they'll be putting their cleaning methods to the test on these squalid surfaces in a shared student house. I use bleach and then boiling water. I can clean my kitchen surfaces up to 50 times a day. That's how I'll leave it. It may look like it's got a slight residue on it, but I'm not bothered about that. This week, Hayley is joined by data manager Carly. OCD diagnosed Carly believes her method of cleaning her surfaces destroys all types of germs. I will get my little bottle and I fill it half with anti back spray and half with washing up liquid. Then I literally flick the surfaces. I would then put the cloth under boiling water, rinse it out, and then I go again another four times. Mum of two, Jade, completes the cleaning trio. Also OCD diagnosed, she can clean her surfaces for over an hour before she's satisfied with their cleanliness. I clean my kitchen worktops up to 10 times a day. First of all, I'll do a wipe with just water and a sponge, rinse it out after every wipe. Then I go with kitchen cleaner and a sponge. Then I give it a good polish, making sure that I fold up the cloth after every wipe. The cleaners are swabbing their own worktops to find out exactly how clean they are. Any score under 500 means the surface is clean enough to eat off. 33. 54. So they've all got their own worktops extremely clean. Next, they want to apply their methods to worktops in a student house. This, they hope, will challenge their cleaning demons. My hands are all sweaty, just thinking about going in there. But how will the cleaners cope with these worktops that haven't been cleaned in over a month and are covered in piles of dirty dishes? It looks like someone's had a poo in that pan. Oh, it really does stink. Oh, it's bad. On the outskirts of Birmingham, obsessive cleaner Crystal hopes to clear out and clean up years of abandoned belongings in April's three-bedroom home. I think it is a case of her being ready to be free of all the clutter that she has. Or I can go home. Hi, April. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Do you want to come in? Yeah, sure. Thanks, April. <laughs> How long do you clean for at home? About five hours a day, give or take. I think my floor just fell away from my feet. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, it's an insane amount of time, it really five is. Hours. In four days, Crystal hopes to clean the dining room, the spare room and son Alan's bedroom. But first, she wants to declutter the kitchen. And that can go in the bin. Bin, keep. With the kitchen surface clear for the first time in years... We've got one clear space in this whole house. This is so exciting. For me, anyway. Crystal wants to demonstrate that for the kitchen to be clean, it needs to smell clean, too. I love smells. Apple smells. I hate apple. I really hate apple. You don't like apple no. scent. Can I, I really push you apple. slightly and just test a patch? Can we try? It's just a slight... <coughs> It catches me throat. <coughs> do you want to go outside? I was a little bit taken back by the coughing fit. I was like, oh my God, should we call an ambulance or something? All the wiping and the, the cleaning, the wiping, the cleaning, the wiping, the cleaning. I wouldn't like to be in her shoes. I like my bits of dirt. In Norfolk, with less than 48 hours to go and with only one room cleaned, Julie wants to tackle Ken's filthy toilet. 
This toilet is really, really bad. There's a lot to do in here. And as you An know... An awful lot. Yeah, but we're running out of time, Ken. At home, Julie deep cleans her toilet bowl every day. But Ken hasn't cleaned his for two months. It's beyond. Seriously. I knew it was but grubby. We've still got a lot of black coming off of there, but we can sort that out with the vinegar. I can see already the vinegar is bringing that up beautifully. With the worst of the dirt removed, Julie wants to demonstrate how she works her magic with lemons. This is how I do mine. Already you're getting that smell. Mmm. I'm sorry, I'm busy eating your loo cleaner. They're really rather nice. In my house, the toilet is so clean, I can actually drink the water. Um, OK, I know I've let mine slip and it's bad, but does your toilet really have to be that clean that you could drink out of it? Why do you feel the need to be so, so thorough? I like things to be clean. I like things to look pretty and shiny. No. It makes me feel comfortable. But if you take it to an obsessive level like that, you're missing out on so much. Wouldn't you rather be walking your dog, spending all your time cleaning? Well, I'm hoping I'm going to go away from this feeling more better about myself and not clean so much. Maybe I do take it to the extreme, I don't know. But the other thing about Ken is I don't think that Ken cleans enough. Well, not at all. That toilet is actually that clean. Today, I'm going to use it. Fair enough. Get out. OK. <laughs> In Birmingham, 30-year-old obsessive cleaner Crystal is working on April's kitchen, the first of four rooms she plans to blitz. I think that's a cleaner sink. Yeah, it's nice. It's nearly sparkly. With the kitchen almost done, Crystal wants to keep going. Hello, Hi, babes. Hi. Right. And husband Paul's arrived just in time to help. Only April has other plans for him. Do you want to go upstairs for a bit? Uh, yes, I can. Chill. Do. Yeah, okay. if you need me for anything, you know where I am. See you in a bit, See you then. In a bit. We need to kind of speed up, and we can't have can't have people disappearing. With April's son Alan, the only one left to help out, Crystal sets him the task of clearing his bedroom floor, leaving them to make a start on converting the spare room into April's music room. That can go. That's bin. Yeah, and that bin and that. Okay. Oh, I don't know what to do with that. Um, we need to get poor somehow because it is getting quite a high, can you see that? high pile. I could do with your attitude because I won't ask. But do you not think that's the reason why your rooms are like this? I feel he works and he works really hard and I just don't think he should be doing it. You know, all the years I've been fairly independent and done everything myself. I haven't had to ask. I think Paul may feel a little bit helpless. He might, inside, feel like he's not needed. This is the situation you're in, that you can't get into this room. Yeah. You need help. I think she thinks that if she allows him to help with one thing, he's going to do everything, and then she's just going to be like this vegetable, and she's, she's not. She just needs to, like, just loosen up a little bit and just say, OK, please help me. The average person comes into contact with millions of germs every day. For the vast majority of healthy people, this isn't an issue. But for some sufferers of OCD, it can be a challenge. I don't think I ever feel happy with my home. It never feels completely germ-free. Hayley has invited two obsessive cleaners to join her in cleaning some grimy worktops that haven't seen a cleaning product in over a month. It's a student house and the students are nowhere to be seen. My hands are all sweaty just thinking about going in there. I think we'll walk away from it feeling like we've accomplished something. This is a test to help them challenge their cleaning compulsions. It looks like someone's had a poo in that pan. Oh, <gasps> it really does sting. Oh, it's bad. I've never lived in a shared house purely for that reason. I'm telling you, there's rats living in there. Oh, don't. Look at that. First, the worktop is swapped. Oh, it's really dirty. Look at the average kitchen surface has ten times more bacteria than a toilet seat. A reading of over a thousand could increase the risk of harmful bacteria being present. <gasps> I feel sick. Oh, OMG. 
This filthy work surface has a reading of up to 4,121. I wouldn't expect that on a toilet even. No. They've each been allocated a section of worktop and will use their own cleaning techniques to see if they can significantly reduce the readings. Tackling something that's over 4,000, that absolutely freaks me out. Look at that. That is disgusting. Oh. It looks like it's got mould on it as well, it does. doesn't it? That brown bit. Let's see for that or a fill in. Oh, look at the hair. God, oh. God it stinks. Harley, if it were me, I'd be tempted to just pour the lot. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm just going to pour it on. That's much better, isn't it? So much. <laughs> Jade, who's diagnosed with OCD, has a very specific method for cleaning. Why are you cleaning straight lines then, Jade? I'm worried about missing a bit. If, if I just go in straight line, then I know the dirt's there, and now go, it goes into the water, disappears, and I can do the next line. So, so you want to see how scummy your cloth is, really, yeah. before you carry on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, OK. It smells so strong. Down the corridor, I could smell bleach. Yeah, it's making my nostril hairs burn. Are you joking? No. It's really, really strong. I feel nothing. I can't even barely smell it. <laughs> it's taken an hour and a half, copious amounts of anti back and a whole load of elbow grease to get these worktops sparkling. Before, these surfaces were saturated with germs. A quick swab of each section will reveal how clean they are now. A reading of 500 or under is considered clean enough to eat off. It's 106 is much lower than what it was before. 56. That's You've brought that down great. like dramatically. Two. Oh, that's good. That's, that's, that's really good. I feel really good that I've kind of exposed myself to absolute grime and I think we've all done really well. I'm really proud of you both. I today faced one of the worst kitchen surfaces I've ever seen. And the fact that I really got down into it and cleaned it for me is a massive deal. If my girls ever move out of home I am going to be over there every single day. It's got to be clean. I'm going to be like a mad mother on a mission. All I keep remembering is that pot of poo on the side and that will haunt me for the rest of my days. Back in Norfolk, there are still two rooms to tackle. Oh. And Julie's making a start on Ken's bedroom, which hasn't been cleaned in over five years. I've never seen so much dog hair. It is a bit fluffy down yeah. here, isn't it? Yeah. Look at them, Ken. That's appalling. That is disgusting. It's almost, I felt like I was in one of them candy floss machines, just gathering it round and round and round. Vile. It is just far too long since I've seen this much of my bedroom floor. Obviously, you've used this floor as a large bin. Is there a reason? I guess I, I, I lost a little respect for myself. I was never here. All my energies were going elsewhere. My mother suffers with uh, dementia. Okay. And she's recently been put into a care home because we could no longer cope. I was spending 18 hours a day towards the end with my mum because she was losing it completely. By the time I was getting home, I was exhausted. But at the end of the day, you mustn't forget to care about yourself. I lost sight of that. That's all I can say. I lost sight of that. I know over the past few years, um, my self-care has slipped beyond any reasonable measure. Yeah, Julie is right. You do have to love yourself before you can love others. Oh, goodness gracious. In Birmingham, there's less than 24 hours of the clean to go. This is a lot of mould. Alan! And with the skip filling up, April and Crystal are happy with the progress. I think it's going really well. I feel compelled to help April. She deserves a nice place to live, and so does the rest of her family. 
I see Crystal as quite a strong person. We are so alike in our own ways. I want to be clean like she is, but not be doing it all the time. With the kitchen, spare room and Alan's room almost dust free. Nice and shiny, look, crystal clear. It's just the dining room to declutter. These. You can bin it. Bin. Rubbish? Yeah, throw it, I ain't bothered. At home, Crystal spends several hours a day cleaning her two-bedroom apartment she shares with her partner and son. You told me that you did five hours of cleaning. How do you have time to do anything else? Where's the rest of your life? You are such a vibrant, wonderful, smart young lady. There is so much out there for you to go and do, and yet you spend it looking at a brush. I do still see my friends. They come round and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, and then I clean around them. <laughs> Time will run away eventually and you won't be able to do what you want to do or what the experiences that you want to gain because you'll end up like, you, you, you know, you could end up like me where you can't do it. While you're like you are, take life by the neck, go do yeah. it. My take friends, Go out for a meal with your other half and stuff. Yeah, I think because I'm in such a rush to get all the things that I need in my head done, I sometimes probably neglect myself and I definitely neglect him. Find something that you're really, really passionate about, that you love, other than sticking your head in a wash bowl. You know, we keep touching on the fact that I need to clean less, but I won't stop cleaning. That's never going to happen. Oh, do you want me to move the trash bag? No. Will I do less? Do well, we're working on it. In Norfolk, it's oh, just the dining room left to clean. That can go to skip. <laughs> when did you last hoover the house? I've never vacuumed here. You've never vacuumed I've this house? And how long have you been here? I've been here 20 years. Due to a dispute with neighbours in the past, Ken has developed an unusual fear of vacuum cleaners. When I hear a vacuum cleaner running, I'm in fight or flight mode. The heart is going, the adrenaline is like pumping. Ken? I know what you're going to ask now. Ken, would you don't like to go? Ask. Yeah, I fine. need to, don't I? You can just, just go over there a little bit, OK? You look fine. That's a good right. job you've done there. You know there, how man. you felt when you saw my loo? Yeah. Right. Do I have to say any more? And I wanted to be out that door. But you didn't, did you? No, I didn't. You've done it. I did it. Well done. Brilliant. Through gritted teeth. Well done. <sighs> that was hard. <laughs> this is a fresh start and a clean start. I'll be able to get my vacuum cleaner out and, and have a chat with him and come to terms with him. Uh, because I'll actually have the room again now. Ugh. In the West Midlands, there's only one day left of the clean. Oh, gross. With the dining room in desperate need of some TLC, April still doesn't want to ask husband Paul for help. I think we need to get these things off the floor and out. Okay. Do you think we could maybe call Paul to help us? Is that something you could do? It's so hard. Why is it so hard calling his name? Because to ask for help is a failure. But listen, it's not because everyone's banding together. So what am I? Am I help? Yes. Exactly. I'm a stranger. You should be more comfortable with him than you would be with me. April, what are we going to do? Paul! <laughs> yes, darling, what would you? She told me that I should ask you for help more often. I would like it if you did ask me for help more often, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I just feel so really, really awkward. You've got me. a witness here. I suppose it's like protection. I don't want to push you away and... I want you to stay here. Oh, I'm here. OK. And... Offering my help. Help. Yeah. 
Okay, can you do that bag, boy? <laughs> you are so nicely. I, how can he refuse? <laughs> He's not going anywhere. I know, and he's told me before. I'm then here, and I'm here to stay. I'm not going nowhere, he said. Then maybe start listening. April restricted me from doing stuff. It did actually frustrate me a bit. I certainly hope that this becomes a way of life for us now. In Norfolk, obsessive cleaner Julie and environmentalist Ken are working together to finish off the deep clean. Here, look at that. <laughs> That's made me feel a little bit ill. As Julie adds the final touches, Ken's son Richard is on his way to see if his dad has managed to improve his living standards. I'm really excited to hopefully see a positive change in my father. He's been living in the state for quite a while now, and, well, it'll be good for him to be able to finally move on with his life. Before, the dining room was under siege, and the floor hadn't been scrubbed in over five years. Now it's an inviting and comfortable space, perfect for Ken to spend quality time with his son, Richard. So much tidier than <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> Wow. So when you come round for Sunday dinner, Richard, you can sit at the table. Yeah. See, I yeah. told you there was a table under there. Yeah. The study had become overrun with Ken's endless recycling. Now it's a creative space where Ken can indulge his passion for making things from old. Wow. This is so different in here. There's an entire floor here, rather than boxes everywhere. It's great. Indeed. Before, Ken shared his bedroom with his two dogs and a collection of cobwebs, living alongside 20 years' worth of dust and grime. Now, with the room clean and tidy, it's a relaxed and calming space where Ken can rest, conjuring up new ideas for his models and projects. Come into my inner sanctum. Don't fall over. Can well. you remember that what used to go around the yeah, ceiling, almost cobwebs. like a Christmas decoration. My troubles are behind me now. There you go. And the insurmountable mountain that I built for myself is gone now. What about the dogs? I'm afraid the dogs will still be allowed in here. They are part of my family. Ken? I will use that hoover. How did you know I was going to say that? <laughs> <laughs> I've had a great time. So we made a really, really good connection. I hope that Ken has learned a lot from me. Maybe I don't need to be so OTT when my cleaning. You know, I can leave that odd cup of tea on the side. It's still going to be there when I get back. All OK, bye, dogs. Bye bye. Bye, Take Ken. Care. I can't thank Julie enough for her help. It's a turning point in my life in more ways than one, and this is just icing on the cake. Back in Birmingham, it's the last day of the clean and April's finally letting husband Paul get stuck in. Paul? Yes? Can you do me a five? Empty the bin for us. Because yeah. it's, it's up to the top. And with the finishing touches in place, April's best friend, Teresa, arrives to find out what she's been hiding under all the junk. Oh, a clean house to April would be absolute heaven. To have somewhere clean and tidy for her own self. That's more than anything I could ask for her. Before, the kitchen and dining room were overrun with toys, trinkets and trash. And the floor hadn't been cleaned properly in years. Now it's a welcoming, airy space. Perfect for the family to enjoy each other's company. Oh, my God. Don't cry. <laughs> Don't even go there, girl. I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> She's going to cry. <laughs> Oh, mate. Oh, don't. I've never seen it this tidy ever. <laughs> and how long, have you, how long have you known me? 25 years. <laughs> Until recently, Alan's bedroom was filled with games and grime. Now it's clean, organised, and the perfect place for Alan to unwind. Come in. Oh, my God, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your bed. Where's all the stuff gone? I put it away. It's, it's not the floor drive anymore, it's the man cave. 
<laughs> and the spare room was once nothing more than a dumping ground. Now it's a relaxing space where April can enjoy playing her music. Oh my God, April. Oh, April is brilliant. This is my room, yeah. I'm gonna have all my hobbies up here. Oh, come here, sweetie. The last few days have been a whirlwind. <laughs> April, you're amazing. So are you. Lots of emotion, lots of uncovering certain issues that we both have had. I want Crystal to stay. I really do. Paul, do. thank you very much. Thank you so much. I hope I can now call on Paul and that he will come. I think I've changed a little bit. It's still got, it's still got work. You take care, Crystal. Bye. The things that I've been doing with cleaning way too much, it's been told to me before, so maybe I need to start listening. Next time on Obsessive Compulsive Cleaners... The uh, last time that I went to the living room was December 2010. Oh my God! That can go, can't it? Uh, nope. So it can go? Nope. Mm, no. I'm just feeling really annoyed because he's not wanting to dump nothing. It really smells of, like cat wee. Hen, where have you gone? Because I'm not doing all this myself. Kelly is a pain in the arse. Oh, Christ. It's going to be a nightmare.